Okay, so I spent some time messaging some of the best 3D artists around the world, hoping I would receive a reply from some of them. And, yep, some of them did. My message to them was very simple. What are your thoughts concerning the current stage of 3D Max comparing it to the quick growth of Blender? I must say, I honestly wasn't expecting the answers I got. If you are torn between paying to use 3D Max or trying out Blender as a beginner, this might be a heads up video for you. I made them understand the purpose of their question and so most of them came in terms with me not to disclose their real identity. We agreed to use some of the projects they worked on instead. After watching this video, kindly check my description box below for a complete 3D Max course. It's a Google Drive file, so you actually don't have to pay anything for it. But the link is going to be available for only the first 200 viewers. Without wasting any more time, let's... So I have my number one reply from 3D's artist Black Myth Wukong. Black Myth Wukong is an action role-playing game by Chinese indie developer Game Science, based on the classical 16th century Chinese novel Journey to the West. Now this is what he had to say. Blender wins hands down in value, 3D Studios Max, Maya and the likes offer similar functionality, sometimes superior. However, they cost the same as a second-hand car to buy and about the same to maintain. Blender is free. Blender is also open source, making it easy to develop and customize. Blender also exports in all the main file types used in the industry. 3D Studio et al. I actually don't know what et al means, I think it's French or something. So 3D Studios et al. are there for those invested time in a specific workflow and can't afford the time and effort required to change. Which is odd, as Blender's user interface is customizable to a point that it can emulate those of any similar systems. I suspect that this is due to more people being employed by the industry who just grind through the day on scripts and molding others' innovation and creation. I don't know if you actually understand what he means here. What he means is, people actually don't want to stop using any of the industry standards because of already modeled, sculpted, rigged characters. Uh, let me use a typical example like Jurassic Park. Most of the companies will just stick to their regular or current pipeline because they wouldn't want to restart everything from um, 1990 ever since Jurassic Park or let's say Terminator began and if they are to shoot a new movie on Terminator, uh, they wouldn't have to go back you know and start everything again since the characters have already been created all they need to do is to remold it make some adjustments uh, refine it and they are done instead of going in for a new software like blender where they would have to start everything from scratch again so it actually makes sense okay so let's continue i mostly model and sculpt if i'm working on a personal project you would find me using zbrush and blender side by side but if you are to find me working on wukong Sure, it's going to be modeling with Maya and sculpting with ZBrush, but there's been certain instances where I've sculpted with Blender instead of ZBrush, and there was no problem with it. One thing you have to know is that nobody would care about the kind of software you used if your final result is quality. So your knowledge first, then the software. That actually makes sense. It still boils down to skills over software, right? I mean, you get that all the time in the industry. Okay, so we are done with reader number one and basically everything he said there was really meaningful. Most people wouldn't want to dump their current software just because another software is flourishing. I mean, they would like to stick with it. Unless for some reason, they would have to pay for some licenses. I mean, most people working in industries have nothing to lose. If the industry is paying for the software, then sure. I mean, why wouldn't you be on Maya if you aren't the one going to be using it? But as a freelancer, you know what, let's just continue. Okay, so message number two is from Ghost of Tsunami. I had never heard of this game before until I met this guy. We met on the rookies.co platform. I'm not sure who exactly he was, but I was more interested in his skills because his works were top-notch. And this is what he had to say. Blender is free. Blender is super powerful and fast. 3D Max is also super powerful but slow. 
Blender is easy to learn because of the available free tutorials you get online, whilst 3ds Max is outdated, not too difficult to use as a beginner, and only has old tutorials with people speaking weird English teaching you. If I'm to interpret this very well, I think I visited this website where you know these guys, like most of the guys with the names like Chesky, Gobsky, you know, those kind of people, their English are kind of weird. I think that's the platform he's referring to. And so, yeah, sure. Most of them were teaching 3Ds Max and Maya, and most of the tutorials were pretty old. They were pretty old, so uh, I get him. Hey, kid, let me say this, but he called me a kid. Every beginner talked into believing Blender isn't worth it because it's free. It's being brainwashed by these Autodesk tutors, and I know a couple of them. I've actually had one tutor discrediting Blender because it's free. I think that was um, 2015, there about, yeah. And I don't agree with people who discredit certain softwares because they want people to buy into their software. And if you go into the schools, you get people doing that a lot. And I don't think it's cool because most of the students would actually come out and not find employment in most of these big industries. If that happens, they would have to opt for something that is free because they can't continue paying for the license that 3ds Max or Maya or Houdini will be, will be charging. There is no work. They aren't working at the moment. That is why I personally think Blender should be installed on every computer for the students. At their own free time, they could just be doing something on Blender. It's much better than restricting them to just one software or two main softwares because that's what you can teach. I don't think that's a wise decision. Blender is being financed by some of the big 3D houses across the world and for that matter, it's not going anywhere. It's gradually taking over a lot of the modeling tasks we used to do in Maya and since it's sculpting is powerful, a lot of us have already made the switch to modeling and sculpting in Blender. All 3D Max can do is just stand by and watch just as Nokia stood by and watched Samsung take over. Well, that's some sick punchline here, but is he going through a breakup or something because the sentences are just like bangers. I'm actually a Maya user, but I began with 3D Max. I'm not sure any human being would reject having a second thought on a 3D suit that has been built with everything a 3D user would need. 3D Max is great, but at this point in time, I would push people to use Maya instead of Max if they have what it takes to finance the software. Other than that, Blender is a strong competitor. Okay, so let's move on to number 3. This is from 3D's artist Shadow and Bone. Now, I actually didn't know too much about this movie until this guy replied. That was when I began watching this movie. I'm actually in season 1, episode 3 or so. And it's a cool movie. I love the effect. I love the storyline. I love everything about the movie. It's, it's really great. You should check it out. This is what he had to say. It's now completely okay to consider Blender since the number of Blender artists keep growing day in and day out. I worked in a studio called DRVFX. It's a motion design studio producing high quality 3D animation. And our main go-to software at that time was Blender. Blender being a free software doesn't mean that it produces low quality animation. There are still many features missing but their progress has been very well consistent. 3D Max on the other hand is a software I wouldn't want to comment on because Autodesk isn't adding anything to it at this moment and it's been almost 10 years since the software received an update. There are certain bugs within the software that will cost you almost 200 USD every month if you want to get it fixed. Yes, they would fix it for you on a monthly basis and that's why I was forced to use Maya. Max's build was really well thought of and for sure, Autodesk made sure most of Max's features were never available in Maya and that's what's still keeping people on Max. If you really know what you want to achieve, I don't think Max or Blender would even be a debate. Consider Max if the studio you are working for is going to pay for it. Oh, that was it. He's done. Consider Max if the studio you are going to work for is going to pay for it. Or consider Max if you are planning on working for any of the bigger industries. Because for sure, you can't rely on blender only if your main goal is to work for any of these bigger companies right so you would have to blend if you are a blender user hoping to work for any of the bigger companies around you have to make sure your software fits into their production pipeline and um, so you would have to add maya or max 
or be willing to learn that's that's the most important thing be willing to learn most of the companies i know will be willing to teach you if you don't know their software but your skills are top notch they'll be willing to teach you so you should be willing to learn try adding more software to the ones you already know it's it's, it's a plus for you this is 3d artist claudia eclipse a student at Jean Norman. Jean Norman. Okay, this is what she had to say. I will say why aren't you asking about Maya instead of 3D Max? Maya's Maya is regarded as the best 3D modeling suit. Has pretty much eclipsed everything else. Has pretty much eclipsed. Has pretty much eclipsed everything else. Okay. I think somehow Autodesk got stuck with 3D Studio and is de-emphasizing it. Some articles claim there are deep flaws at the core of 3Ds and some bugs can't be fixed. For 200, okay, she's also repeating the same thing user 2 or 3 said. For $200 a month, there should be no bugs. From what I've seen from students who have advanced way past my skills, with either Maya or 3Ds Max, it is easier to get better results with character animation than it is with Blender. I believe that somebody with advanced skills in Blender can get excellent results, but they've climbed a very steep and tall learning curve to get there. Okay, what she meant was they would have to climb a very steep, well, maybe she would explain, let's just, let's just continue. In my opinion, Maya and 3Ds automate the kind of features that makes character appear as realistic as they do. With Blender, the animator needs to apply a lot of skills manually to get anything approaching the fit and finish of a character built with Maya. Okay, so she explained it. This is what she means, right? The best thing about Blender 3D is that it's freely available and has a huge following. It's relatively easy to code with Python when some effects can be achieved with Blender's GUI. Since it's free, lots of people can use Blender. Since Maya or 3D's mask cost thousands of dollars, plus $200 a month if you come across bugs. It's not an option for many. Blender is better for many because it's very capable. And did I mention it's free? Yeah, she already did. Maya is better because it's a de facto standard in the industry. From what I see, 3D's Max is also excellent, but isn't getting any more development from Autodesk, leaving some bugs with workarounds and not fixes. Well, I hope you understand this one. She actually made everything pretty simple, breaking everything down for you guys, um, so I wouldn't have to explain any further. Okay, so let's move on to the last reply on my list. There is more, but I would just like to end it here because this guy wrote a lot. This is from 3D's artist Battlefield 4 and 5. Man, I was so excited when I realized someone from Battlefield had replied me. Now this is what he had to say, as a user for both softwares over 15 years, since I'm a generalist, uh, someone who touches everything that they see, someone who will use anything that they come across, I'm in a position where I can do pretty much anything in both, so I think I'm in a good position to answer this question. For modeling and animating inorganic things, 3D's Max is 8 times more efficient than Blender. In all seriousness, for inorganic things, including animation, if used at their maximum potential, 3D's Max is the best 3D for both animation and modeling as long as you don't need to print blueprints, now have to take measurements. Um, I think when it comes to measuring, we don't measure with polygonal softwares, so you would have to look somewhere else like AutoCAD, Acacia, Siemens and XM all those ones but we wouldn't want to get into that let's just stick to 3d's max and blender when it comes to modeling angles sizes and positions 3d's max tools are two times to four times faster and are more precise this comes from a technical limitation of blender that isn't in 3d's max for positioning 3d's max uses regular floats which is 16 bit and for modification it uses double floats which is 32 bit precision Blender uses regular fluids for transformations, but is limited to half fluids, which is 8-bit, for modification. While both offers the same base system for animation, which is scanning, position, orientation, size recording, and skin morph, 3D's Max has almost every kind of amateurs 
bite c80 regular bones and it's super simple if you know what you are doing you can set up custom amateurs even for complex setup within a single hour that's sick now he gets the uv mapping in terms of uvs for inorganics i would say it depends on what you are aiming at and if there are any limitations in uv's island counts and their positions if you need a precise flow in the uv because of a technical reason like using mask or effects in a shader that requires precise uv location 3d max beats blender hands down i can custom unwrap 350,000 polygon models with precise rules about the island size location seems within 60 minutes easily blender on the other hand offers the best speed when you don't have any rules or technique involved because the seam system plus unwrap works really well if you need to rework the uv island that's where blender suffers greatly because its tools are bare bone in comparison one thing i can say though with blender 2.8 non beta version is that working with models that has multiple materials assigned to them is far better experience than on 3ds max 3ds max has been for many years really buggy when it comes to multiple materials shared over multiple objects okay so i think he compared blender and 3ds max when it comes to inorganic modeling and uv mapping really well and i would commend him for that now he gets to blender when it comes to organic stuff blender beats max hands down okay i see what he's doing here that's that's some sick comparison he did right here right he spoke about inorganic and now he's talking about organic blender beats 3ds max hands down on round one the only two things that 3ds max could be said to have a better hands with organics is to optimize the topology manually as well as adapting the custom uvs such as its awesome relaxed uv tool 3ds max has better and faster too when it comes to merging and adapting the vertices to reduce the polygon count as well as if you want to produce a low polygon version of a high polygon from scratch that's one drop in a full bucket and 3d smacks won't even be good at creating high to low polygon textures for things like games anyways because it still uses an old projection system that hasn't been updated properly for 12 years everybody seems to be talking about 3d smacks lack of update and the fact that there are bugs in the system which hasn't been fixed for a very long time and i think it's a problem but for now i don't think autodesk is actually um, thinking of solving these problems with, for the general public like one of the readers said you'd have to pay 200 usd to get the bugs fixed so let's continue autodesk clearly puts more workforce for development in maya than 3d max some bugs are in 3d max for so long that the developers who still work on it are unable to fix them because the guys who worked and created some of the system don't work for autodesk anymore is that bad Sculpting and manipulating the objects for organic stuff is far better in Blender than 3D's Max. Yeah, um, Blender sculpting system is really packed and it's really powerful. Especially in Blender 2.8 which requires a tiny bit of adaptation at first. Once you do have a proper idea of where and what tools are in there, Blender is really good for creating organic models like characters and creatures. So for short, if you aim at recreating buildings, robots tools items or interior okay so these are the inorganic stuff he explained um earlier on 3ds max has the upper hand whilst blender is not far behind but it's truly behind on 98 percent of the tools if you aim at modeling characters that involve sculpting or texture creations like with high to low polygon projections blender has the upper hand now these are the organic stuff he explained earlier on if you are looking forward to using a tool that you can theoretically go with over a decade, I will say Blender is far better than 3ds Max simply because of one fact about 3ds Max. Autodesk is abandoning 3ds Max slowly. It's not just a case where the company wants to optimize its investment by stopping dividing um, its forces between two products that has extremely similarities production values, Maya and 3ds Max but also because Autodesk developers are not able to properly fix 3ds max multiple bugs and core issues over half of the remaining bugs in 3ds max that are over one year can't be fixed because of the reasons and he quotes it's a bug within the core of 3ds max so we can't do anything about it unquote as stated by the Autodesk developers themselves really they said that never heard of this one before but well 
This is a common issue with projects that have evolving teams over a decade and those who originally worked on parts aren't in the same place anymore. Okay, I think um, user 4 explained this one better that most of the developers who worked um, on some of the codings in 3ds max aren't working for the company anymore so their new users or developers aren't able to really find fixes to the problem they just move on i might be wrong in fact everybody has their own thoughts when it comes to using um, a 3ds product but the chances are higher that blender would exceed 3ds max on every level in future since blender is in a relative higher development cycle with development goal being higher now if you are to ask me which one is better between Maya and Blender, that would be far harder question to answer. Okay, so he actually didn't go straight to the point as to which software to go in for, but with the kind of explanation that he made over here, I think we all would attest to the fact that choosing a software should mostly be based on what you want to achieve, right? Like I said in the beginning, I've shared a complete 3ds Max from beginner to pro course in my description kindly don't forget to download it's for the first 200 people don't miss out on it until my next video peace out